are in the universe. The first star we pass is our own sun. By far, not the biggest one out there, but it's still massive. You could fit one million Earths inside it. That means if you think of the sun like a basketball, Earth would be half the size of a pencil eraser. If we put all the planets on one side of the scale and the sun on the other, the planets wouldn't stand a chance. The sun makes up 99.9% .9 of all the mass in the entire solar system. Mass is basically how much stuff or matter something is made from, and it's what you can thank for stars shining. You see, the more matter in a star, the thicker and hotter its core becomes. This starts a chain of chemical reactions. Hydrogen atoms get smashed into each other to form helium, releasing an incredible amount of energy. That's the star's light and heat. So, bigger stars also equal brighter ones. But with all those reactions going on, this shortens a star's lifespan. When it starts to run out of fuel, the star will enter the giant phase. It'll expand and turn red. Which brings us back to the task at hand. The biggest star we'll find is likely to be on the edge of its life. Switching on our hyper light engines, we soon arrive at the Lumen 16 system. Here, we'll find one of the smallest stars out there, a brown dwarf. Small here means about the size of Jupiter, but they're small for stars. Brown dwarfs are also called failed stars because they don't have enough mass for those chemical reactions. That means they're not as bright, but they're super dense. All the matter in them is packed together so tightly, they weigh 80 times more than Jupiter, even being the same size. Huh. And if you think that's something, just look at a white dwarf. 